Lastly, we have our Custom Apps tab, and this will allow you to edit and maintain your custom apps and also use your D72 functions and you'll be able to assign them to the various tabs here and sort and order those tabs from there. Now when you're in your custom apps, the left side is going to be the apps that you'll be able to select from and manage. First you have your original apps and that'll show you the D72 default apps that are maintained through the D72 update feature and those will be maintained by Foolish IT so the download links and setup and settings will always be up to date and maintained by Foolish IT. Using these custom programs will allow you to uh, rely on the D72 update to make sure things are customized and up to date. Sometimes download files or links change. Foolish IT maintains a up-to-date list of those and you can update them through the update app in D72. If you do happen to customize an app, you can always take an app and save a copy and that'll put it in your Your App section. Or if you needed to save a new custom app that you go through and define on your own, you can use the Save Test Now and that'll add it to your custom Your Apps as well. Next you have our D72 functions where you'll be able to view all of the internal D72 functions and more will always be constantly added and updated as things progress with D72. You'll be able to search those quickly and easily. And show just those results. It is nice to note that it will search not only the name but also the short description as well. You can see they're categorized into the different uh, sections that may be used for those functions. And also you can use the all functions and search. Any of the function sections are going to be searchable though. Next you have your section to be able to edit or create a new custom app to run and add into D7. And here we'll go ahead and check one. You can see you can set your application name, the author it's going to be maintained by. If you're creating your own, you can always set your name there. You'll set a short description here, set the help file and the download page, and you can test them by using these. If you needed to define if this application was had manual operation where you had to click something or work with the application itself. You can select that here using the fully automated or auto and silent slash invisible mode. Those will basically mean that it's either completely automated and there's nothing for you to click or interact with but it still shows on the screen or if you have the auto and silent invisible mode it will show that it is completely automated, runs in the background and you may not have visual representation for it. Lastly, on this page, you can set the versions of Windows it will run on and the platforms that it's supported by. For the help file and download page, if you right click on one of your custom apps here, you can see your download page and the help file here. Next you have your download page where you can customize how and where it's downloaded. If you want to make sure that your app is up to date you can always set your uh, date here. If you wanted to make sure it was updated uh, every day you can just set it to 0.5. That'll make sure it's up downloaded and updated at least once a day. Otherwise, if you hit zero, it will always be re-downloaded. This one was set to check for a new update every week. You can also check this box if you want to make sure it's downloaded from an FTP path on your FTP server. So if you wanted to host your downloads yourself, you do have that option here. 
and also you have a non-direct URL method as well as a spoofing referring URL and these are a little bit more advanced features we may go over in a quick tip later. Next you have your path to download and you can notice that it has a 32-64 bit and a 64 bit only. What this means is if the file is compatible with both 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. You'll only have to put it in this one location. If the program does have a 32-bit specific app and a 64-bit specific app, you'll want to add the 64-bit specific app download URL and path here. Otherwise, you'll uh, want to have the 32-bit only in this 32-bit, 64-bit section. If there's an alternative download place that you can download the file from, you can add it here. It does have to be HTTP for the alternate download, however. You will want to make sure that you test your download, so it goes ahead and runs a custom test of that. Next you can do your pre-execution and this will either allow you to set an audible alert if you do need to manually touch that app it is nice to be alerted when that happens as well as having an email alert so once this app becomes run ready to run the technician working on it that you selected as the login technician will get an email alert about that. If you needed to run an installer beforehand you could here and also add command line parameters to that installation. Also, if you wanted to import a configuration before you started using that app, you can set that here. Next, you have your actual execution of your application. Again, you have the same 32-bit, 64-bit options. So if you do have one that's 64-bit only, you'll put it in this one. And then the 32-bit specific version here. Or if it runs on both, you can run it in just the top box here. You can also open the directory and research the file name if needed, or browse directly to them. If you needed to add some command line parameters, you can add those here. Otherwise, if you needed to gather reports, normally you do want to wait for app termination, so just that one app runs while it's waiting. Another nice feature is being able to randomize the file name when it runs. That way malware or other uh, applications that might be preventing that application from running, it will have a custom random file name and won't be able to be stopped and can sometimes circumvent those options. If you do have issues with it reading configuration files or files in its folders there, you may want to run it in the command prompt and you do have the option to run it that way here. Also, if you want to make sure this runs as system user instead of the local or current user, you can select that option here. Lastly, we have our post-execution tab, where if you need to pause or prompt after uh, running the app in model mode, it will give you a time section for that. You can save your uh, registry settings if you need to after running the execution. Also you'll be able to copy your log files to either the reports directory or malware reports directory. Alternatively you can move them. You just need to set the path here. Here you can set the work report language. So this is where you would want to set some user friendly language about what you did and what this app does and what you used it for and that will be usable on the custom work report that we'll go over later. You do want to make sure that you save and test your settings and if you needed to make multiple copies of that app you could always save a copy or if you needed to clear your settings or create a new one you could do that with this. Next you have a similar feature for the D72 functions You'll be able to edit the short description as well as edit the work report description here. Next we have our assign apps function to section where you'll be able to customize the custom sections on each of the D72 tabs and you'll normally have 
at least two to three, and one for your tweaks and offline operations section. Here you can review the ones that are currently set up and be able to add and remove custom ones. We're going to go to our functions here and you can add any of the D7 functions to any of the custom tabs there. And once you add it to the list, it will appear in the bottom. You can move it up, move it down, and remove that app. You'll also be able to clear the list if you need to. And also be able to reset the list to the defaults. When you say yes here, it is going to ask you to type in yes in all caps to confirm that you're going to reset everything back to the original D72 default list app. You also have the option to add to your tools menu and scripts menu. So if you define custom apps and uh, tools, you can define those and add them to the menu bar in the tools here or scripts here. Lastly, you have the option to set the startup, so every time D72 starts up, it'll run an application. And next, you have one to start at the beginning of a session, as well as at the end of the session. So when D72 starts a session, you can have it start up a few applications. Alternatively, at the end of the session, you can have it start a few applications as well. Lastly, on our custom apps tab here, you have your integrated apps and this is useful for when you're running remotely and using a tool such as the FSX Mini you need to download one of your uh, custom apps that are integrated here you'll be able to store it on the uh, FTP server you have and if it's needed or you want to run these from any of the built-in configuration settings on D72 you'll be able to run those and it'll automatically download it from that section. Again, this is most helpful when you're on a SFX mini operation where it needs to download the files and you don't have everything in your third-party tools folder. And that completes our configuration of the settings in D72. So we're going to go ahead and save and exit here.